to the next level. And we're actually teaching on point number five, step, I'm sorry, step number four. Change your way of thinking. Change your way of thinking. Very quickly, let me share with you what we've already established when it came down to dealing with our thinking. We focused on what our minds were like before uh, regeneration. And where we are tonight is we're going to begin our discussion on after regeneration. After regeneration. Now, the reason we're going to go in this area is simply because many people become confused about what really happens the moment you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. So when we finish with after regeneration, hopefully you will get a clear understanding as to where your mind is and your personal responsibility as it relates to your own mind. First thing I need to establish is that following repentance, moment an individual becomes saved, the believer's mind is not totally liberated. Let me say that again. In other words, when a person becomes saved, that individual's mind does not automatically becomes renewed. That's where the problem enters into the hearts of many believers. And because of that, Christians have a tendency to settle just on the idea of being saved. Got me? They don't understand that we have a personal obligations in dealing with our own minds. So just as the enemy worked through the mind when you were unsaved, now that you are saved, he still seeks to work through the mind. Everybody got me? We're going to go to Paul's writings in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 listen to what Paul shares with us as to what it is he is afraid of he said but I fear least somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Does everybody hear what, he, what he's saying? I need for us to make sure that sinks in. Now the reason why is because even though Paul, just like us, we are saved, but there is a, a life that you must understand exists with an unrenewed mind. So when he saved you, your mind did not become instantly renewed. I wish I could fix it up better than that, but I can't go no other direction. Based on that, we have to say then that consequently, the mind remains the most tragic area of battleground that the enemy attacks. Now keep in mind, Satan knows he cannot now get your soul. So his best next move is to get you to thinking the opposite of what just happened in your life. Everybody got me? That's his mission. That's what he wants to do. So as Christians then, we should realize that satanic spirits, number one, are real. I don't, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings here, but sat satanic spirits are directing special attention to our minds. Okay? 
That's their mission. He comes at this. Now let me prove my point based on what Paul states in 2 Corinthians 11 and 3. And I want you to note the character that Paul uses in the text, E. Okay? What I need you to understand is that Eve's heart was sinless. Let me say that again. Eve's heart was sinless. But notice what the enemy was smart enough to do. He did not attack Eve based on her heart. He attacked Eve through her head. Do, do you hear me? So that tells you now that Satan has techniques to bypass you being saved and attack this if this happens not to be or become renewed. Satan will drop into your mind his thoughts. His thoughts are always, you can't make it, you will never succeed, you won't mount to anything, it's impossible for you to get from this point to this point. Everybody got me? And when Satan continues to do that, if you are not careful, you will believe it. You will rest on it. This is why, as your pastor, I'm forever trying to get the saints to understand the need to get into oh, this. I, I want you to listen to this statement. Man's head damages people more than man's heart. I'm going to say that again. I hope, hope you understand what I'm talking about. Man's head damages more people than man's heart. Now let me explain what I'm saying. If this is out of control, this will sometimes verbalize what's up here. As a result of that, I can mislead you through negative talk. You, you got me? If a Christian's mind then is not renewed, then that person is bound. So it's possible, listen to me good, to be saved and bound. Can I tell you what I mean? Satan will trap your thinking and put your thoughts in a cage. You are saved, but you can go no further than the boundaries of the cage he puts your mind in. Does everybody hear me? This is why it's so important that you be careful who feeds into your mind. Yes, sir. I, wa I want you to listen to this statement. An unrenewed mind furnishes basis for the enemy's operations. I need to take you to Erlanger? Let me take you there. What I mean is Satan takes save people and place their minds on the operating table and he operates and put within your mind negative thoughts so you got to remember if this doesn't exist in your mind you have and I'm way ahead of myself but you have an empty head and he fills it with negative thoughts Does everybody understand? This is why it is critical that you get to understand you have a responsibility after you get saved. When people get saved, and this is the problem 
with many Christians. They are saved, but they do nothing up here. And they can't understand how they function. So they remain for years on this level. No growth, no change. The fellowship with Christ isn't enriched. And generally, stay with me, the only way the Christian kind of reminds him or herself of being saved is through emotions. Got me? And the moment the person cannot shout, they don't feel they're saved. The Word of God teaches us that there are two distinct minds, two opposite kinds of minds. I'm going to give you what those minds are. First one is the carnal mind. The carnal mind is also called the mind of the flesh. The carnal mind or the mind of the flesh. Secondly, there is the spiritual mind or it is also called the mind of Christ. The carnal mind or the mind of the flesh, the spiritual mind or the mind of Christ. Paul makes a statement about these two minds in Romans chapter 8 verse 5. Listen to what he says. For those who who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. Let's stop right there. Stay with me now. That doesn't mean don't take a bath. It doesn't mean it's a sin to dress up. It doesn't mean it's a sin to look nice. That's not what that verse is talking about. That means that you have allowed your flesh to govern your behavior. Everybody got me? Then he goes on to say, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. All one has to be uh, certain of is that you got to make the decision based on who you are in Christ, which mind you possess. Now, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings, but all of us sitting in here used to have a carnal mind. Let me take you someplace else. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Verse 6, where Paul talks about the carnal mind of a sinful man. And listen to what he tells us what it is. For to be carnally minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So in that one verse, you got a description of both. In 6 a. Paul says that the carnal mind is of a sinful man and the end result is death. 6b says that the mind controlled by the spirit is life. I got me? So now you understand why Satan enjoys using the mind. Have you ever thought about you couldn't get depressed if you didn't have a mind? (laughs) 
You understand? So, we as Christians need to know that if we are going to live a full, productive life, notice I'm talking to whom? Christians. If we're going to live a full, productive life, then our minds must be renewed. So it's possible to be saved and depressed. But everybody got me? And see, this is an area that I wish many Christians can, you're responsible for your own mind. Not, not the Holy Spirit. He, he is not going to bogart your mind and instantly drop the word down. It doesn't work like that. You, you, you've got to understand the scripture says, he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. That means that the door knob is on your side. So throughout your fellowship with him, he is going to wait on your direction, your guidance, your move. Many of us, and notice I'm, I'm careful because I used to get in trouble at the publishing board. You'd be surprised of difference when you say many, all, You, you have to be cautious. So I'm being very, very cautious. Many of us fail to seek the renewal of our minds. This is what we do. We park in church. And we honestly believe Satan is angry because we come to church. No, he's not. No more. No. Told you, been teaching this for years. He'll come in with you. He'll sit on the pew with you. All he got to do is sit you beside a negative person. Because he has enough sense to know an unrenewed mind is easy prey. See, you got nothing in your mind to guard him off. So when he brings that which is negative, it's easier to receive it. So he says to you, you are never go no further than where you are. How is that possible? Nobody in my family ever made it this far. Boy, y'all looking at me like. First of all, some of us as Christians think that the renewal of the mind took place and occurred at the point of salvation. And if you can just teach our people, us, that my mind is the same as it was when I got saved. And unless I do something to this, nothing changes. No, nothing changes. So when you became saved, it becomes your responsibility. So the first thing I need you to make sure you establish in your spirit is this, that when you became saved, your mind was still unrenewed. Second major bullet I need you to grasp is that some of us simply become spiritually satisfied or content with just being saved. In other words, we don't really want an enriched fellowship with Christ. I'm just happy that I got him. Okay? Am I making any sense? Does everybody understand? You ever been around people, you may know some. They don't want any more out of a relationship or, 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 or fellowship than what they just got. They just... This is it. This, this is enough. And this is the way some people are when they get married. Don't y'all get quiet? Do you, you hear? You, you, 
you can't talk there. And you, you can't walk up and say, well, I got her now. Well, see, I'm old school. And I was taught whatever you did to get a person is the same thing you need to do to keep a person. And that's what happens to us in our relationship with Christ. We, we become content and satisfied with just being saved. So the enemy plants into our mind and our spirit. He shows us the blessings of everybody else and comes back and says, but, uh, you know, they ain't right because they got this. And you know, how they got that ain't right. See, that's what he does. As long as he can keep you thinking the wrong thing, you will never realize that what they got, you can get. I want to talk about a mind under the attack of the evil spirit. Let's base this on what Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. I know I did it backwards, Sister Paul. I apologize. But Romans 12 and 2 teaches us the need for a transformed mind. And you might ask yourself the question, why is it that God didn't do the mind when he saved us? Well, let me help us out. He doesn't touch the mind because then you will become his robot. That's right. I'm going to explain to you a little bit later what God's intent was when he created us and who is actually in control. Based on what I just mentioned, a mind under the attack of the evil spirit. Now, I'm talking to save folk. Everybody got me? I'm not talking to unsaved people. I'm talking to Christians. I need you to know at this very moment, your mind is under attack. Let me say that to you again. Your mind is under attack. Your mind, y'all looking at me like I'm mentally disturbed. You can sit there and don't need any help to think something negative. That's right. It comes natural. It comes easy. Depending upon what happened in, in your life today, you can just sit by yourself. You don't have to call nobody. You don't need nobody to come by your house. You ain't got to talk to nobody on the phone. You can sit, say, got a gift. Participate in church. But your mind becomes an open battleground. So we have to be careful as believers how we deal with this. Okay? Got to be extremely careful because Satan will come at you in the most unusual ways to get to this. Boy, just... Some of us are simply narrow-minded. Well, I know how I'm going. The, by, by me being saved and my mind is not what it's supposed to be. This is why the Holy Spirit spoke to me a long time back and said, you got to be a teaching church. Let me tell you why. When you spend majority of your time running from one church to another church. Over here, men day. Over there, women day. Grandpa day. Grandmama day. And little bitty baby infant day. You got all of that. And see, what we end up doing, we're caught up with all of those events. And if you are not careful, a whole year has gone. And you got the same mind you had that you started out with in January one of 2017 
And if the day was the last day of 2017, you got the same mind. Because nobody takes the time to stop and say, what do I need to do to get this renewed? How can I possibly change my way of thinking? I need you to understand that the Christian head sometimes overflows with uncontrollable negative thoughts. Now I'm gonna talk some crazy talk because I don't want I don't want nobody sitting in here. First of all, I don't want y'all make me think I'm by myself. <laughs> all right? But I need you to and I want you to keep it real. Don't don't get pseudo holy on me. I want you to keep it real. Have you ever just sat down and had a moment where uncontrollable thoughts got in the mind? And you, you had one negative thought, and before long, you got four or five. You say, Lord have mercy. Let me, let me help you. Talking to the parents. Talking to parents now with children. So-and-so sick. Mm-hmm. That's your child. Sick. Next thought. Lord, they're going to die. Ooh. Lord, have mercy. I'm just sitting there thinking, huh? what am I going to do with that? Ooh. And then the TV is on. Then the moment you get ready to get up, walk out the bedroom, the commercial comes on. So-called same disease your child got, the commercial is talking about. <laughs> now, oh, Lord, she died from it. The Christian might see themselves as being powerless. And Satan enjoys that. But I'm here tonight to tell you, you are not powerless. You have within you everything God intended you to have. Don't ever tell somebody you need more of the Holy Spirit. I'm not here to bash nobody, but there's a song out. And I promise you, if Miss Nancy played it, I'd have to get up on the Sunday and say, like can't sing it, choir. Because I got a problem when you tell me you need a little more Jesus. Boy, y'all looking at me real strange. If a Christian find themselves faced, listen to this, with any of these signs, you need to check out something. Check out the matter to determine where is the origin of all of these negative things coming from. You got to ask yourself that because you say, and if you're saved, why, why am I thinking crazy thoughts? Let, let me, see, boy, I, I ain't looking for no amen, but I, I need you to say it a little louder for me because what I'm about to say, they're going to think I'm crazy. All right. Have you ever just sat out and said, hmm, what if, if I did that, could I get away with it? Boy, y'all. Yeah, you know, oh, everybody have said, you, it's, it's the, the big lotto Look. issue. You don't even have to play the scratch off, whatever it is, I don't even know. You don't have to play it. But you can just be sitting there yeah. and a thought hit you. What would I do? With all that, <laughs> With all that I mean, come on now. If, if any of y'all about as broke as I am, I don't have to wait to get excited over, over 250,000. Heck, I'll faint at a thousand. <laughs> don't holler a million, just a thousand. I just drop my head and go, Lord, have mercy. You got me covered. But, but 250 million? Your mind goes out of zone. Because the very things you putting up with now, you instantly say, don't want no more. Yeah. Boy. Yeah. 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 So the Christian, the Christian then must 
ask oneself certain things. Listen to this. Who controls my mind? Who controls my mind? Myself? Powerful question. Who controls my mind? Number two. And if so, if it's myself, why can I not control it now? If I control my mind, why is it I can't control it now? Third and final. Is it God who manages my mind? Well, we got a problem because so many people have been taught that God controls their mind. No, no, no. God designed man in such a manner that you govern your own mind. Boy, I hope y'all be my friend after this. It is neither God, watch me now, who regulates your mental life, who's in control. If God is not in control, and you say to me, you're not doing the thinking, well, we got a problem. Are you ready for the answer? All right. Since you are saved, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, blood covered, and you are under the blood, and God is not managing your mind, you are not managing your mind, then the forces of evil who had possession of your mind before you got saved. Boy, I sure hope y'all understand where I'm coming from. You got me? Because you've already established now this doesn't change because you got what? Saved. No, no, no. He does he, he would not be God if he took your mind and, and just did it over at the point of salvation, the moment you accepted Christ. What would, what, what, what's left for us to do? Got me? That's why there are different levels of Christians. Because many Christians don't see that they got a responsibility. If I don't do nothing to this, Nothing won't change. Thank you, Regain. You know, I like you, Doc. I mean, you you cool with it. You just slide on up in here, man, and you just lay on that little pew all by yourself. But Doc, you 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 got some strength, cause I can hear you. <laughs> if that is the case, then man has an awesome obligation. See, the first thing I had to establish in understanding this concept is that Satan had this when I was unsaved. And he wouldn't let it go when I got saved. Now stay with me. I have the Holy Spirit who lives inside of me. But I must yield to his presence. Okay, how many of you remember the illustration I gave of guests coming to your house? Let me remind you again. I come to your house. I knock on the door. You open the door and let me in. I come in and I sit down in your living room. You have five bedrooms two dens, a kitchen, and four bathrooms. But I'm in your what? Living room. 
I have not yet entered any of the rooms other than the living room. It becomes your responsibility to yield through hospitality me in all those areas. You can sit back and say, well, they know I got that many rooms. Knowing you got and been in are two different things. So through the power of the Holy Spirit, God has planted all you need is in you right now. His presence. Power of the Holy Spirit. If you're born again, you got all of him you're going to get. But he doesn't have all of you he's going to get. Got me? So there are moments that some people stay right in the living room with the Holy Spirit. They don't go no further than right here. They in church. They enjoy coming to church. That's fine. But they can't understand when they leave why does things go downhill. Why is it that by Monday I'm back the way I was last Monday. There's a leak up here. And, and the leak is because I have not exposed myself to his presence in my living room. So I need to say to the Holy Spirit, come go with me. On down this way. Because Lord, I got some stuff going on right here that I need to give to you. And I promise you, if you take control of this, It'll make us. You can, some folk don't pray like that. Some of y'all pray, Lord, you know that closet down there on the right? Some stuff is in there and it ain't, it ain't working. Wrong prayer. He already knows that. You got to remember, he knows more about your house than you do. Everybody got me? Boy, because y'all, sometimes I have to keep asking that question because some, some of y'all just kind of stare at me. All right. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me make a statement. God created man. This is an issue that in class we could talk for hours on. But God created you with what he calls free will. Do I need to say that again? Your mind, you as a person, your network, your makeup is not for God to control you. That's why I gave you a mind. You make the choices. You make the decisions. And in order to do that, God gave you what he calls free will. God's intention is for man to control himself. I know, I know that statement just don't settle well because I can hear somebody right now in your thinking. I, I don't agree with that because, see, I have the Holy Spirit. Well, you tell me, tell me now, if that's the case, why aren't you perfectly saved at this moment? Why do we make mistakes? Am I making sense? Does, does everybody understand me? Does everybody understand me? All right. I, I, I need y'all to, to, to wake up. When I, you know, I like when I talk. I ain't asking for your amen. I need your response to make sure we're on the same page. Man then has the authority to regulate his natural habitat, his natural endowment. You do. Everybody. You. Can I ask you something? What? what? How did you come to church tonight? Please, and please don't tell me, I was in the bed and the Holy Spirit just woke me up and and, 
told me, now listen, I'm not making fun. He does do those things. But you have to have a desire. You have to have a hunger, a concern, a thirst. He, he is not going to bypass. He does those things. Did you understand the illustration this morning? Did, did you get what I was saying? Grace was made available simply because of the wrong choice Abraham had made. You, you, you with me? So God took the wrong thing of a person to turn them back into the right direction. That's all he did. That's what happens to us. And especially with your mind. Boy, I hope y'all get this. Christians then should ask themselves the following questions. Back to the question. Number one, are these my thoughts? <laughs> are these my thoughts? Number two, is it I who am thinking? And please don't leave me out here on the limb by myself. So I act like I'm the only one that's bidding there. That there are moments you've asked Who's doing the thinking here? Is this really me? Is, is this you, God? I mean, I'm, I'm a little thrown off. Can you give me some input as to whether I'm, I'm doing the right thing or whatever the case may be? If the Christian is not thinking, then you got to go back to what I just concluded. That we don't understand how Satan blinds minds every Sunday morning. He on a mission. Boy, I he messes with the pastor's agenda. Because if he can get me to have a programmatic spirit, then it throws you off course from being fed spiritually. Do you understand? Y'all have no earthly idea. I, I've, been, I've been the talk of folks sometimes. Because we don't do what other folk do. Yeah. 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 See, back in the day when I wasn't clear on what we were doing, we got invitations. Uh -huh. Then I couldn't go preach without telling them this ain't what we do. Then they started listening, and it was like, oh, they ain't come back. Because it is hard for me to take y'all places, and we participate in stuff we don't celebrate. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because I'm interested in your mind being fed the word, and not just through preaching, but teaching. Am I making, do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? So if I'm programmatic, then it won't take much for me to cause your minds to be messed up. Whew. All right. Pull up this statement, Sister Paul. I hope I shaded it. Yes, listen to this. If a Christian refuses to think, and yet there are thoughts still arising in one's head, one must conclude that these thoughts are of the evil one. See, you can't tell me that if you are thinking evil and it ain't your thoughts, and you know that God doesn't give you evil thoughts, you got to own the fact that the evil one plants evil negative thoughts. I sure hope I'm making some sense. Do, are, you, are you getting it? When this occurs, here's the problem. Most Christians give in to the negative thoughts. Got me? So when, 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 when the enemy showed me 
my status. When I was much smaller, the enemy kept telling me, you are not going to go any further than your drunk daddy. Mm -hmm. The enemy said, you're going to be just like your daddy. He's a drunk. You're going to be a drunk. And don't y'all, please, please, please. I had aunts and uncles mm -hmm. that was into the juice. Boy, y'all make me feel like yeah. it just sometimes be like, Lord, what planet am yeah. I living on? Because I, I, I had one aunt was a school teacher, bless her. Never saw a drunk a day in my life. Never saw her drunk a day in my life. But she was a sipper. No, 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 no. Y'all have to understand what I'm saying now. She did not get drunk. But she had sip, drink daily. Just enough to give her what kick she needed and die with cirrhosis of the liver. Boy, yeah. My whole life changed because I realized then I had one view of a drunk and I had to establish another view. Mm -hmm. So everybody walking that appears to be can't say they're not a drunk. Just might be an alcoholic sipper. Boy, I let, let's listen to this. Let's listen to this statement. Listen to this. Man's mind belongs to man. Without a person's permission, the enemy would be powerless to use it. 